Who are ya? Who are ya? Um, guys, welcome back. Counterattack Podcast. We've got another one here for you. We are just banging them out. Thank you very much for the love, for all the likes, for all the shares, the headlines, everything. Um, so, boy, just, we've got another one, innit? Um, today we've got another Premier League player, because that's what we do here. Um, no, I'm joking, I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. But we do have a Premier League player. Um, we've got um, a Watford player, plays at the back for them and for Germany. Um, really, really cool guy. We've got Christian Cabasele today. Ooh. So I'm just going to bring him in. And then we're just gonna we're just gonna go. Hopefully he comes in. Yes, Christian, how are Hi. you, man? I'm good, you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I'm just I'm just here coping with this quarantine lockdown, just like everyone else. Yeah, yeah we have to. We have to. A few yeah. few weeks to go, I think. Maybe. Oh, just two weeks. Yeah, uh, before the the lockdown is a little bit uh, yeah. less strict. So, yeah. how's um, how's how's things going in regards to you know getting ready to come back to to football? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Uh, since now we're two months, I uh, I went uh, I went alone. It's mm. uh, it's tough. It's uh, it's hard to to run so much the so much time without knowing exactly when. When you come back, yeah. but uh, hopefully tomorrow we we will be back uh, on the pitch and uh, and try to to build up uh, to build up our our fitness again. Yeah. Do you feel like you're going to have to have a whole almost like pre-season again to be ready? Yes. Yes. It's uh, it's a must because uh, I think there is no football player. Uh, who has been uh, stopped uh, as long uh, as uh, of this period? Mm. So uh, normally we have like uh, six weeks off. Uh, yeah. Now it's two months, uh, so we need uh, to have a proper proper preparation, proper preseason to avoid uh, any physical problem after. Yeah, um, you said you're back. So that's tomorrow. You're back in training properly. Uh, we train uh, groups of four or five, but uh, it's basically it's individual training. But we have four or five players uh, at the same time on the pitch, so we we will keep uh, the social distancing. Uh, I think we will not uh, see uh, a lot of uh, talk uh, between players or something like this. It will. Yeah. Uh, it will be uh, go on. You arrive at training ground. You go on the pitch, and uh, as soon as you finish, either you go in the gym if you need, or you go home. So, uh, yeah, that's the new the new normal. That's got to be a bit hard though, because they're doing all of this social distancing, and when you get on the pitch, you're having to you're going to be right next to each other anyway. So surely, yes, they- of course, of course, especially after a long. Uh, a long period without seeing anyone like this mm. uh, you want to you want to speak you want to you want to to make jokes with your with your partner to see how uh, how they dealt with the uh, with the quarantine but it's not uh, it's not the moment to do, to do this uh, maybe uh, in few weeks we will be able to to spend more time together but uh, for the moment we need to, we still need to be uh, to be careful with that yeah without actually like if you know without actually telling the actual date? Like, have you been given a date where you feel like the matches are going to be back without actually saying the date? Uh, no, no, nothing has been confirmed yet. Uh, personally, I follow the news uh, through, the, through the media uh, uh, because uh, nothing has been official for the moment. Uh, we speak about the 12th, but obviously the 12th of June I think it's impossible because uh, less than three weeks of training after a long period without doing anything, it's it's a risk for us. So yeah. I, I'm not sure. I don't have any information, but I think we we're not gonna start the 12th of June. Yeah. Um, the most uh, the most obvious choice for me it's uh, end uh, end of June. Like this, mm. you have uh, at least four weeks uh, to train with the team uh, if it's possible. 
so uh, so we will see. Uh, for the moment, it's uh, it's a big uh, big question mark on this. Yeah. How much input like do you as a as a player have when it comes to the Premier League deciding what they're going to do? Do you literally just get emails and messages saying, okay, this is what's going to happen, or do they actually ask you what you think is is best? Uh, no, they don't ask. <laughs> They don't ask. Uh, they don't ask at all. Uh, I think they are following their process, and uh, only uh, the first uh, the first time that uh, they ask the player something, it was uh, last week. Mm. Uh, so we we get uh, the the phase one of the of the project restart uh, presenting to us, and um, and uh, and yeah, it was uh, it was the first time, but. Uh, uh, before that, uh, we just followed the news through yeah. the through the media. Through the and media, it, that is frustrating. Yeah, it's and it's it's crazy because you actually play for Watford, obviously, and your captain is in the is in the news today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw it. <laughs> yeah, he's he's in the news, and um, yeah, what, what what do you think about what he's had to say? Because me personally, I like it when Troy Deeney talks because he speaks realness he speaks the the real he speaks sense and everything but a lot of people it makes headlines i don't know why it makes headlines because he says a lot of common sense but um for you as well if you had those concerns would you also be saying look no i'm not going to train as well or would you feel that you might get in trouble for not going to train well you are freezing oh i'm freezing i'm okay now yeah, yeah. i'm okay Can you repeat please okay. oh yeah so no, it's okay yeah okay so I was just saying, um, yeah, so Troy Deeney, when he speaks, he speaks a lot of sense and, you know, it's things like if he's in fear of his health and his, his um, baby's health, he's not going to, to train. But are you able to freely say that as well? Or do you feel like you might get in trouble if you don't go and train? No, I think, uh, and the club has been very, very clear, uh, really clear with that. Um, Every uh, every individual individual player uh, is making his own choice. Uh, oh. They are not putting uh, pressure on us to see to say you have to be back. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's about uh, the player the player feelings and uh, every personal situation. Uh, oh. For the moment, they, they 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 came to us with the phase uh, the phase one, and uh, personally, I was. I was quite uh, happy with what they, they present to us. Um, so we will see what uh, what they are uh, what they are planning for the phase two and the, for the phase three. Yeah. Um, if it was uh, starting tomorrow, training uh, eleven v eleven with a contact with uh, everybody at the training ground, uh, I would not go. That's, uh, oh, that's okay. for sure. Uh, but with the phase one, uh, personally, I think. That everything is uh, is uh, is put in uh, in place and uh, and they try to to make at uh, the training one as safe as possible. So uh, I try. Uh, I want. Uh, I want to see how uh, how the things uh, happening there. And of course, if I see that nothing is respected, there is no social distancing, <laughs> and I and I don't feel safe. I will not come anymore. So yeah, yeah, it, it's yeah. Uh, it's a personal choice. It's a personal okay. choice. As, as long as it's a personal choice, because I think a lot of people are under the impression that it's almost as if they're forcing you to, to go back and you don't have a choice. But um, it's nice to hear that you do actually have a say in, in the matter. Um, it's normal. It's our, it's our life. Uh, there is a lot of person uh, vulner vulnerable uh, in some uh, in some families. So... Uh, it's a it's a personal choice, and we have a, we have the choice at the moment. We have the choice at least. Yeah, but at least you've got the protection of your club to, and they're giving you the option. So that's that's always a good thing. Yeah. So away from all of the project restart, Watford season. Obviously, it's not really been the season you guys maybe would have hoped for, but um, if you could look at it and and find reasons as to why it maybe hasn't really happened this year is there anything you could point to or like what, what are your thoughts on it 
Um, I think uh, one of, of the reasons uh, of our bad season is, uh, is the start. The start of the season was really, really bad. Uh, mm. When you don't win a game uh, uh, for some, so much time, uh, for sure you will, be, you will be in trouble. And uh, that's what happened with us. Uh, yeah. I think that uh, the, the last season as well uh, didn't help us. Yeah, it it can uh, it can seem uh, like uh, strange, but um, maybe after last season we thought that we we just need to go on the pitch to not do the same work as we we were used to uh, as we were we were doing uh, last season. Yeah, and uh, the result will come uh, will come easily, but in the Premier League is not is not like that, and uh, we. We were really low in confidence after the the first uh, the first three games. Uh, we had uh, we had we we took a lot a long time to to recover from uh, from this. Yeah, because at the end or well, in December, obviously the the manager changed. And what what would you say, Nigel Pearson, when he came in, brought in with the club? Because you guys were, I think, when he when the last manager left, you guys were in the relegation zone. Yeah. I think yeah. We were well, lost. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um I remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I remember you being in relegation. I couldn't quite think yeah. if you were at bottom at that at that point. But Nigel Pearson has come in and you can see that the performances have actually improved. What what would you say that's been down to? Uh he came in with a simple uh, simple distinction. Hmm. Uh he, he was uh, he was really hard with us on the on the on the training uh, training pitch. Yeah, and um, he didn't come in like he wanted to change everything or things like this. No, he came with simple restrictions, uh, basic things for for football. Yeah. and uh, I think uh, we 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 went uh, in the game and uh, we were we were we were free in uh, in our head to 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 do our job. Uh, more uh, more effectively so um, that's uh, basically what uh, what he brings to the club and you as 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 a player when a new manager comes in is it a whole thing like oh, i've got to prove myself all over again because was it was it kike who signed you uh no i signed uh, when he left so you signed when he left okay cool cause I, th- I thought he signed you oh you signed literally I think about a month or two after. Yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. after. Yeah. Okay, because he came back and um, you you played quite a, quite a few yeah. times under him. So when a new manager comes, is it a thing of like, I've got to prove myself all over again? You need to prove yourself every day, uh, not only when the new manager comes. Uh, yeah, that's my uh, that, that's my uh, that's how uh, I, I am. Uh, even if I can start ten games in a row. Yeah. Uh, I will always work, work the same because football can change very fast. And uh, of course, when uh, when a new manager come uh, come to a club, uh, uh, everybody starts from zero, and uh, he doesn't care if you played uh, 10, 20, or thirty games. So mm-hmm. you need to. Every, we, we can see this uh, at every change of manager. Every player starts to work hard, and uh, after when the manager do his choice, uh, everybody. Uh, at least the player who doesn't play, they they, they just uh, drop their their level sometimes because they 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 they, they, um, how to say this? they feel that they cannot um, prove their value to the manager. Mm. And uh, so when another a new manager come again, it's a process, and uh, they start to train uh, at two hundred percent again. So it's always uh, it's always uh, exciting when a new manager comes because. Uh, Everybody gets a two hundred percent of motivation. How hard is it when you're out of the team, though? Like, how do you keep not focus, but what motivates you to actually get back and and keep your head clear and to say, look, I'm going to come back. I'm going to come back. That how how do you manage to just stay so determined to get back and motivated? Uh, the thing is that you need to be ready. Because uh, if you don't play for 10 games, but you go on the pitch for the 11th games and you are bad, people will yeah. say that's why he's on the bench. Uh, 
so uh, so you need uh, you need to be ready for for that moment because when you are on uh, on the bench you you will get maybe uh, one chance or or two chances uh, from from ten games to to play and you have to be to be good you 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 cannot permit to to um, to be uh, to be bad on that moment because yeah. if you are bad you you will go straight uh, straight back to to the bench so that's uh, that's what uh, motivates me to to keep working because in football everything changes so fast so you need to be uh, to be to be ready for whatever happens yeah as a I support Arsenal so yeah I I was I was supporter of Arsenal when I was a kid <laughs> It's okay. You, you you can say you still support them. It's okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, now it's finished. No. <laughs> so, um, when when you actually play against Arsenal or when you see Arsenal's coming, is that the game you kind of look out for them because you you supported them as a kid? Yes, of course. Uh, Arsenal will uh, will always be a special game for me because uh, I was uh, I was a massive fan. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, I, I I I love to play against them because uh, when you are a kid, you you dream to play uh, to play uh, to play football in big stadium, and when you have the chance to play against the team that you were supporting, it's uh, it's amazing. So uh, so yeah, I, I will not say that I'm more motivated, but for sure I'm more uh, more exciting, and uh, I'm I'm always looking forward to play at the Emirates or to play at the at Watford against them. Yeah. Because the reason why I ask is because looking from the outside in, when I look at Watford, you guys have such a good team. You always give us problems. Mm. Always give us problems. But it always seems as if there's um, like a merry-go-round with, with managers. Mm. Like you within the club. I think, have, have you been through four managers since you've been there? Uh, I, I think so. Yeah, four. Yeah, one, one every year. One, one every year. So when when that's happening, what is it like in the club, like in in regards to stability or just like moving forward? Is it always in the back of your mind, like this manager might not last long, or do you just have to just get on with it, basically? Uh, it depends on the result. Um, if you have both positive result, as we we had with uh, with Ravi and Gracia. Uh, mm -hmm. When he came in and uh, in last season, we we don't think about that. But uh, when you you have a run of three four games uh, really bad, you start to think that uh, yeah uh, maybe it will last uh, two three weeks uh, one month we don't know. So uh, it's it's based on the on the results. If uh, if the results are good, you you don't ask uh, you don't think about this. It's uh, only when the the result. Uh, are coming uh, so bad that uh, you start to think that yeah maybe his time uh, his time is over. Yeah, but some there must be some which which surprise you. Uh, uh, I don't I don't think so. Uh, oh, really? Because yeah, because uh, we know how the club is uh, okay. is is doing. Uh, everybody knows that. When uh, when you don't have a uh, good result or good uh, for for a long time at Watford, you you have a big chance to to be sacked uh, sooner or later. So we we are not uh, we are not surprised because football uh, is uh, is dictated by uh, by the results. And yeah. uh, if you cannot win games for 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 ten times in a row, uh, of course uh, the the person who will pay is the is the manager. Mm. But how much of that do you, as a players, take blame? Because obviously, it's always going to, you know, get passed on to the manager, and the manager is always going to get the get the sack first. But you, as a player, do you ever look at it and feel like we've let the manager down, as opposed to the manager's rubbish? Uh, when you change three times the manager and uh, and the result are still bad. Uh, mm. Of course, it's not the, the the problem of the manager, yeah. and uh, I think we we realize that uh, after uh, Kike has been sacked, uh, yeah. we just thought that we can change ten ten times the manager this season. But if the as the player we don't do the job on the pitch, 
we will still be uh, in the relocation zone. So now we need to we need to do what we can do, and uh, and go on the pitch and give one hundred percent. And uh, and with the help of the of the manager, we 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 achieve that and um, and stop blaming other other people when uh, us the player we were uh, we were not good uh, on the pitch. Yeah, would would it be safe to say you're enjoying your time under Neil, um, under Nigel Pearson? Yes, of course, of course he's a he's a, he's a good manager and uh, a part of that is a is a good uh, he's a good he's a good person as well. Uh, he's always have a, a nice word for you when you when you arrive at the training ground. Always uh, asking about uh, about your family. So in uh, in that kind of moment, it uh, it really help uh, help you to to go on the pitch and uh, fight uh, fight for him. Okay, we spoke a bit about um, Project Restart and everything, mm-hmm. but um, there was a time where people were saying they should maybe scrap the scrap the Premier League at that at one point. Because of where you are in the league, were you for that, or were, were were you always under the thing of no? Actually, I want to come back because if they scrap it, you're obviously safe. Mm. But Liverpool don't win. But um, yeah, I, I, were you always thinking no? I want to come back and play, or in the back of your mind were you thinking you know what? I'm alright with them scrapping it. You know? No, not at all. Not at all. I'm. Uh... A football player, and uh, it will be. Uh, I think it will be un- unfair to finish to finish the season now, when there is still a chance to finish it on the pitch. Um, I think that now we still have time to finish it on the pitch, uh, uh, but uh, uh, there will be a moment when uh, when uh, we we will not be able to to finish it on the pitch, and only on that moment we will. Uh, Maybe think about uh, curtain uh, content the season, but uh, from the beginning I was uh, I wanted to to finish the season on the pitch because uh, if I was a uh, uh, Bournemouth player I would be uh, I would be upset to go down uh, on goal difference and uh, we didn't finish the season. So I think we need to be to be fair with uh, with everyone. If it's safe to to play again, we 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 should try. Uh, but of course, if at one uh, one moment uh, it's impossible to do it, uh, we need to we need to finish to finish it now. And Watford, as a as a team, when you look at some of the players you, you guys have, like you're not you're not doing yourselves any like justice because you know when you look at you know yourself, you've got the Mariapas, you've got the Kapues, you've got the Kore, De La Feu, um, Troy Dini, when you look at these players, do you sometimes look at it and wonder why you can't every week go out and put on performances like you did against Liverpool? Yeah, it's difficult to explain. It's really difficult to explain. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's the Watford way uh, because since, uh, <laughs> since, since, uh, since I'm at Watford, there is always a moment uh, when the team will be very good or the team will be very bad. There is yeah. no Rea uh, Rea or middle zone or what fourth uh, was on that good, but they won the game. No, with us, it's always all really good or really bad. So yeah. I can't explain why, uh, but, uh, but uh, of course it's a shame because we have such a, such a quality, uh, as mm-hmm. you said, um, in, in every line. And, uh, if we if we if we can find this uh, consistency, uh, yeah. we 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 will be uh, we will be higher uh, in the league every every season. We will be we will be able to fight maybe for for a place to to Europe. Yeah. Speaking on that Liverpool game, when you guys were playing um, against them, did you have that feeling because you were underdogs? No one expected you guys to win at all. But did you have that feeling in you that, you know what, this could be our night? Did you know that like, it was just going to happen that day? Yes, especially at the halftime. At mm-hmm. the halftime, we, we were thinking that today is the day because uh, we felt on the pitch that uh, they didn't have many chances. Uh, we had a lot of space uh, in their defence. So we thought that 
today is the day. If we if we don't beat them today, we will not uh, beat them. Uh, uh, we will never beat them. So um, so yeah, that uh, that day at the halftime, uh, we we had this uh, this confidence to go on the pitch and uh, and tell to ourselves uh, today we are not uh, we are not losing this game. Yeah. Um, let's speak on Sar. Sar scored. Um, I think he scored twice that that game actually. Yes, double. He, he's got. What's he like in and around the club? Because your club have high hopes for him. Um, yeah. So what is he like to play with in training, in matches? Yes, yeah, Sar is a is a top talent. Um, before he came to Watford, I didn't know him, but mm. the French player told me that he was a he was a top talent, and I and I saw it uh, saw it on the pitch. Uh, he has uh, he has this space to 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 pass on uh, any player in the in the league, uh, and uh, and he's quite humble. Uh, he came. He's a he's a really really good guy, really nice guy, and it's not because he scored twice against Liverpool that it uh, it changed the the days after. So mm. so uh, I hope he will uh, will keep working like this and uh, and try to to stay fit as long yeah. as possible, and uh, and uh, and I think he will. Uh, he will have a, a, a big move uh, sooner or later. Okay, you as a player, because you're you're obviously a Premier League player, play for Belgium and everything. But you obviously like watching football. So who in the league would you say you enjoy watching? Um, this season is obvious. It's uh, it's Liverpool. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, I enjoy uh, I enjoy a lot watching them because. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's total football. Uh, they will not do uh, fifteen passes to to say we do fifteen passes <laughs> yeah. to win the goal. If uh, if we can reach the goal in two passes, we we yeah. will do it. And that I think that's why the the Liverpool's games are are so spectacular and so good to watch because uh, it's a, almost a box to box game. So mm-hmm. yeah, it's really entertaining and uh, it's a, it's a shame that. Uh, they are not sure now to to be champion at the end uh, at the end of uh, of the season because they deserve uh, this deserve this uh, so much and uh, it will be uh, a big uh, big disappointment I think for for the football uh, in England if they are not, uh, if they are not champion because they they were the the best team uh, by far. Yeah, what would you say it is about Liverpool that makes them so hard to play against? They are uh, they are self confident, not not arrogant, but they are uh, so confident in uh, in their in the power that they, if they decide to hurt you, they will hurt you. Um, if I compare with Manchester City, Manchester City it's um, it's a mobile possession. Uh, they will take time to uh, to uh, to wish uh, to wish your goal, but with Liverpool, you have the, the feeling that. Okay, now we are we're gonna score, and they they they, they score on that uh, on that occasion. So, so yeah, that's uh, their uh, their big strength. Would you would you say? Um, because when I look at it, I look at Liverpool, and they just look so solid in every department. But obviously, like you said, Man City have you know this possession based football and this possession based philosophy. Would you say though that when you're playing against Man City? They kind of give you, like they could be got at a bit more than than Liverpool. Uh, no, I won't say that uh, because against against City is really, really tough as well uh, mentally because you know that you will not have the ball for maybe 80, 80, 80 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, mentally, it's really it's really tough. You will uh, you will only defend maybe in front of uh, of your box. Um, so it's really it's really difficult to play against both. Uh, but uh, I, I would say with Liverpool it's more dangerous because Liverpool they are able to let you the ball for a few moments, yeah, and uh, keep uh, Salah, Firmino, and Salah in front. And after you are you are dead on uh, on the counter attack uh, when uh, when uh, when City uh, they, they 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 really love to to have the ball for for, for most of the game. Yeah, you came from Genk. I have to say, is it Genk or Genk? Genk. It's Genk. Genk. Yeah. Genk, yeah. With with a K. Yeah, you you came from you came from there. And 
how did that move come about and like when Watford came in for you were you aware that there was um like um interest from from England or did it come as a as a surprise uh no i knew that uh, there were several teams who were who were following me uh mm. what for the were uh, was uh, one uh, one of them and um and for me it was uh, when i knew that uh, it was obvious uh, since the beginning i wanted to to come in the premier league and uh, and uh, Watford was uh, was the best uh, the best place uh, the best place for me. We are close from uh, from London. Uh, uh, it's it was it, they did a very good first season back in uh, in the Premier League, and uh, I always had the feeling that uh, it could be a good uh, a good deal for for me. And you know, a couple seasons in, and um, Watford reached the um, the FA Cup final. Mm. Um, I know you said you didn't get on the pitch that that day, but what is it like being involved in such a massive match? Yeah, for me, even if I didn't play, it was one of the best moments of uh, of my career uh, mm. because uh, having the chance to play uh, such a prestigious competition, prestigious mm. final, it was it was unbelievable. The the atmosphere uh, that week, the the atmosphere, uh, the day of the game. Uh, everything was uh, was unbelievable. Um, unfortunately, we we didn't do the job on the pitch, but uh, mm. it it stays one of, one of the best memories in my football career because almost uh, all my family was uh, was at the stadium, and uh, yeah, it was um, it was a good uh, a good day. Mm. Because a lot of I'm, I'm happy that you, that you're saying it's one of your best um, memories because. A lot of people look at the FA Cup and say that it doesn't have the same glitz and glamour like it used to. People don't value it as much. But do you, in football, have that feeling amongst the players that the FA Cup isn't what it used to be? Or is it still held in, in such high regard? I think you can ask to the player if they whether want to win the, the, the Carabao Cup or the FA Cup. And mm. I think most of them will say the FA Cup. Uh, the FA Cup is the is the oldest uh, cup competition uh, in the world, and uh, such a big team have have won it. So for me, it's always it's always something special when I when I have the chance to play to play the cup. Um, I remember the quarter final against Crystal Palace uh, yeah. at Watford. The stadium was full. Uh, the, the the atmosphere that day was incredible as well. So. For me, the the the, the FA Cup is is the best uh, the best competition in uh, in the world. Okay, and um, when you're involved in you know like such massive games, um, naturally international teams come calling. Um, question: You decided to play for Belgium. Mm -hmm. um, was there ever a time where you thought about representing Congo? Uh, yes, uh, I had several uh, several uh, talking with the uh, with the national uh, manager there, mm. um, but you know, uh, at one moment when uh, when you know that uh, you have a chance to play for for the Belgium team uh, with the amazing player they had, uh, they and they still have, um, mm. your choice is uh, is uh, is uh, is done quite uh, rapidly. Uh, mm. So, um, so yeah, I, uh, I, it's, it's some at some point of my career, I was asking myself uh, for which country I would play. But after uh, I did, I did play for the Belgium national team uh, uh, in uh, at under under eighteen. Uh, mm. So for me, I w it was logic to to keep going with with them, e yeah. even if I had the possibility to play with uh, with the Congo. And when you look at a Belgian team, surely it must only be a matter of time before before they come home with real, like a, a big tournament, whether it be the Euros, whether it be the World Cup. Because do you, within like within the Belgian, you know, community of players, do they feel like this is probably their best squad in years and their best chance of winning something? Yes, of course. When you see the talent in this team, uh, 
when you can uh, you can uh, play with uh, Kevin De Bruyne and Eden Hazard in the same team at the same moment, that uh, that means a lot. Uh, I think these two are the the the, the biggest talent ever in uh, in Belgium and mm. uh, a lot of players as well in other positions. So so yeah, it's a shame that uh, the the Euro was postponed. Um, I think we we would have a really good chance to to win it this year. Uh, so uh, so yeah, um, it's quite uh, in Belgium. It's quite now uh, now or never. So yeah. uh, we will see uh, in one year how uh, how is everybody and if it's possible to to lift uh, to lift the cup. Are you not happy, but um, because it gives you like a whole a whole another year to to fight and get get back into that that squad. Like, is that something you're you're looking to actually just? Get under your belt, and you know, get a whole get a whole season under your belt, play well, and then next year represent Belgium, twenty twenty one. It is next year, right? It is next year. Yeah, yeah, twenty yeah, twenty one. Yes, yeah, so of course, it's uh, it's my objective. Um, I had the chance to to be in the squad for for the Euro twenty sixteen in Belgium. Yeah, and, uh, in France, sorry, and uh, it was it was amazing. Uh, it was amazing, and I want to. To 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 live that kind of tournament uh, every every two season and uh, as you said I need first to be to be good with Watford and uh, after I will get the possibility to go to go back in uh, in the national team. Okay. Well, speaking of Belgium, you know you guys have great talent there. If you had to look at the players you've played with, whether it be for Belgium, whether it be at club level, who would you say? I feel like this is going to be an easy one. Who would you say has been yeah. has been the best for you? The best talent, like the most talented player you've played with. Yeah, I think uh, it's uh, it's Eden uh, Hazard. Eden Hazard, it's uh, it's uh, it's a top player. Um, he he can decide when he, when he will uh, he will uh, he will do something uh, magical. And uh, I never I never. See a player like him. Um, even if I have to say that Kevin De Bruyne is, it's unbelievable as well. Uh, I I was playing with uh, with him in the in the national team under under 18, and uh, at that age it was uh, already uh, uh, a player from another planet. So uh, oh, you could already see that even at under 18. Yeah, in in terms of his technique is. Uh, Vision of play in terms of everything, he was in advance on uh, on everybody. So uh, it's a it's a it's a top player, but I think that um, Azar is a bigger talent uh, than him, even if it's uh, like uh, the two best player in uh, in Belgium at the moment. Mm. Uh, Azar is uh, he has a short short advance uh, on on the point, maybe because he is he has a kind of play more. Um, more with dribbling uh, than the, with the, with the passing, yeah. Yeah. If you had to pick, forget Ronaldo and Messi. If you had to pick your top five players right now, no Messi or Ronaldo allowed. Who who would you put there? Um. Yeah, Hazard, Hazard, De Bruyne. Mm. Uh, oh. You got me by, by surprise, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Hazard, De Bruyne. Uh, so I help you with this one. Sa- Sa- Salah, Salah is a, is a, is a world class as well. Um, oh, you put Salah. You put Salah in there. Yeah. What, what what is it about Salah that makes him so good? Because you've played against him now. Yeah, Salah is. Uh, how to say this? He has a he has, he's so strong on his. Uh, on his feet, uh, it's really difficult to to uh, to uh, to to destabilize him on the pitch. He's really uh, he has this strength, this power to to resist to to any any shock, to any yeah. uh, any any challenge. So, and after in front of the goal is uh, is unbelievable. Uh, so I would put him. Okay, the, so that's so that's so far you've got. Hazard, De Bruyne, and yeah. um, Salah. Two more. Yeah. Um, 
at the moment nobody is playing so i can remember <laughs> <laughs> no uh i thought you were gonna put maybe I'm, neymar mbappe yeah well M mbappe for sure uh yeah these two you you just did my top five <laughs> yeah okay cool yeah. so now we're going to get into some questions that people have been sending in so there's a couple i'm just gonna i'm not gonna ask all of them um the best dribbler at the club at watford uh the best dribbler uh delofeo gerard delofeo yeah, yeah i thought so can you be um actually you, know, you ain't got answers but can you sometimes be frustrated because you know what he can do so when he doesn't do it is it frustrating but then you just think he'll do it again in 10 minutes and it will come off yes of course of course i think yeah sometimes you 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 just you just wonder what uh, what is he doing but uh, in the next minute he will uh, he will uh, do something magical and uh, and uh, give you give you the result that you want so uh, He's a uh, he's really he's really a top player. Uh, when you will find as well as everybody at Watford is uh, is cost cost in uh, this constant level. Uh, of course, he, sooner or later it will be maybe too too big for Watford. Um, is Troy Deeney a hard man around the club, or is he actually really soft? <laughs> So basically, is, is, is Trey Deeney as, as hard as he goes on like he is? Oh, no, no, not, not goes like he is, but how, how he might come across. Or is he actually a big softy? Uh, outside of the pitch, he's, uh, he's a really nice guy. Uh, he always, um, he always, uh, he always um, uh, taking care of you if you are new. Uh, yeah. Giving you advice. Uh, but the... the, the on the match day during the game, it's uh, yeah, it's really it's really tough with us. It's really um, really uh, really hard. Uh, maybe some time to to accept, but uh, it's, uh, he's our captain, and uh, and uh, it's uh, if he's strong with us, if he's hard with us, it's uh, it's for a good reason. Do you because there was a time where I think he was injured throughout the season at one point, and he was and he wasn't playing. Do you notice the difference straight away when he's on the pitch? Yes, especially for the opponent, I think. Because uh, I think the opponent are afraid to play against him. Uh, yeah. You can see that uh, when uh, when he's on the pitch and he starts to win one or two challenges, uh, yeah. after the, the, the defender doesn't play the same. Uh, when he's not up to, on the pitch, it's true that we don't have the same... Uh, the same physical presence up uh, up front, and the uh, and the opponent uh, uh, looks to have uh, more uh, more confident to 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 defend uh, to defend on us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the funniest at the club. <laughs> He's the funniest. Yeah, the funniest is uh, is Etienne Capou. Etienne Capou. Capou because uh, yeah, you you don't have the right to do something strange when he's around you. Because you can be you can be sure that uh, five minutes later everybody uh, at the training ground will be uh, will be aware about what uh, what you did. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, you you give him a small a small thing to to joke about. He will uh, he will use it. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny. Um, the toughest player you played against in the in the Premier League. Um, it was uh, Sergio Aguero. Uh, mm -hmm. Sergio Aguero is. Uh, is uh, is the is the complete striker. Um, he's so quick, so he has so so much velocity on the first meter. Uh, he's physical um, and uh, he's really smart because he always try to to be uh, between two players. Uh, so you never can see where uh, where he is and uh, and if one of the goal is a uh, is a killer. So yeah, that's the best uh, the best player against uh, against who I played. What sort of striker do you like to, to play against? Do you prefer the ones that will run in behind or the ones, the physical ones? Which, which ones do you, do you prefer playing against? Um, I, I prefer the physical, the physical because uh, with, the, with the guy running behind, sometimes you, you, you cannot uh, catch them back. But with the, 
with the with the physical striker you know uh, you know what our our what kind of game it will be so it will be challenge 50-50 almost every time so you are uh, you are uh, you are expecting uh, him to come to fight but yeah. uh, when uh, when they when it's a player who is running uh, in behind uh, it's really uh, it's really tough to to manage with the with the space behind the, behind your back what do you love this ain't on here but I'm going to ask this in what do you love most about playing in the in the Premier League? Like, do you still kind of because you've been in now, I think three or four years. Um, mm. Do you do you still have to like almost pinch yourself to be like I'm actually a Premier League player? Like, what do you love most of it? Um, most about it, and and have you actually come to terms with it in your mind? Um, I start to realize slowly, slowly that uh, that I'm playing in the Premier League uh, because uh, a few years ago I was uh, I don't know if you if you know this but I was a striker and uh, really I changed yes I changed position at the age of 23 years old uh, so oh, wow. really late and um, and uh, even if I'm playing every day in the Premier League. Uh, mm. I, I I don't realize what uh, what uh, what I'm doing there because uh, I wasn't supposed to be to be uh, to be a defender and at the end of the day I'm a Premier League central defender and uh, I enjoy uh, I enjoy that because um, the pitch are uh, unbelievable the the atmosphere at the stadium the you play you play against the best player in the world so that's the, that's the best place to play to play football for sure. What made you change from striker to um, centre back? Uh, back in Belgium, I, mean, I was in uh, in the second league in Belgium, and uh, we missed uh, we missed one central defender one week or two weeks before the the start of the season, and the manager one day came to me and said, "Listen, you are uh, you are fast, you are strong. Uh, I want to try you there and see uh, how uh, how you deal with that." and uh, Obviously, I did. Uh, I did quite well. Did you Did you think like, hold on, are you telling me I'm rubbish as a striker, <laughs> or did you just think? Did you just think, you know what, we need. He needs help. Because if that's me, I'm mm. I'm saying no. Nah, you think I'm rubbish? Like, what was going through your mind when he said, "I want you as a centre back"? In the first moment, I was. Um, I I remember I was calling my agent and. <laughs> so to him, listen, you need to find me something, uh, something else because here uh, I'm gonna change position and uh, and I don't want that. Mm. Um, even if, even after the two three first uh, training session, yes. um, I went to the manager office and I said, listen, I can work hard as a manager, uh, as a as a striker, and I can uh, and I can be the striker that you want me to be. And uh, basically, he said, no, I have. Uh, I have other possibility at that position, so it's either you you stay a striker and you stay on the bench, either you you come, come uh, you become a defender and you will be in the first eleven. So uh, it was my last year of contract at that club, and uh, I just switch uh, switch on on my head and uh, okay, I will do the the defender now, and uh, and uh, it was uh, it was successful. So. After playing there, was it a thing of, you know what, I played here and I've done quite well, let me stay? Or was it that another team came and saw you good as a defender and they decided to take you on as a defender? Was it your decision or was, or was it a club that came in for you? It was a club decision. Uh, so Genk, uh, Genk came, uh, came to watch me several times and uh, I had the chance to be free at the end of the season so I decided to not extend my contract to my uh, to my previous club and uh, Genk bought me for, for free and uh, they bought me as a, as a defender they, it was a big gamble for them because uh, at that moment they had uh, Kalidou Kolibali as a as a, oh. as a central defender yeah. and they sold him uh, 8 million euro or something like this and uh, people were saying uh, why you go for for a free man for a free central defender who is defender since only one year mm. when you just get uh, uh, maybe ten million cash and yeah. they, they they trust uh, they trust on me and uh, and uh, yeah I'm I'm thankful uh, thankful for that. 
Well, yeah, I'd be thankful for that too because you end up in the in the Premier League and yeah. you're doing really, really well and long may it continue. Um, but lastly, before before we wrap this up, you, you've still got many years left. You've still got a good six, seven, if you really wanted to. I don't know what your plans are, but do you ever look at football and after football think you might want to go down the coaching route or management route or have you got other plans for when you eventually do stop playing football? I'm not saying it's now, so you don't yeah. have to have this in your yeah. As late as late as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, we had uh, we had the chance with the with the national team to um, to get the the the, the coaching badge uh, mm-hmm. in a, uh, how to say this in a quickly process. So yeah. instead of uh, doing the the UEFA A and B in uh, in two years, we had the chance to do it in one year. Mm-hmm. So uh, I took uh, I took the possibility to to do that. And uh, I don't know what uh, what I'm gonna do after my career, but that uh, that can be one thing to do. Um, it's a, it's obvious choice when you are a football player after you become a assistant coach or manager. So yeah, I think it was it was important for me to to take that chance and have something in my hand after my career. And uh, after it's up to me to make a, uh, to make a choice. I want to to keep going in the in the football world or do something else but I want to enjoy uh, as much as possible my uh, my playing career because yeah. uh, I remember that uh, I had I had a tree Thierry Henry, uh, in the national team as assistant coach yeah oh yeah and, with um, Roberto Martinez yes yeah. and uh, and he said that you need to enjoy uh, your football years because it go it goes so fast after you 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 don't have to have any regrets at the end of the of your career. So mm. enjoy uh, enjoy every day, and that's what I try uh, I try to do. What was it like having Henri and Roberto Man, uh, Martinez? Well, what was it like working under them? Because ah, oh, that's a good that's a good matchup. Because Roberto Martinez is a top top manager. Like for you um, playing under them, what was it like? Yeah, it was. Uh, First of all, to have uh, my uh, my ex idol as a, yeah. as assistant coach, it was unbelievable. Uh, uh, he wasn't only there for for the strikers. That that mm-hmm. was the, the good thing. Um, he gave me so much advice. Uh, I remember one time uh, I had like a one on one video video session with uh, with him. Mm-hmm. So he was involved with everybody, and uh, it was a top experience. Yeah, uh, for for me, and uh, and yes, Roberto Martinez did uh, did uh, did a great job with the with the national team. Uh, he was able to to put uh, all the, all the talent on, uh, at the same moment on the pitch, and uh, and keep uh, keep uh, keep a competitive team. Uh, so so yeah, it was uh, it was a big uh, big experience and big plus for me in my career and. Uh, and I, uh, I'm looking forward to go to go back in the national team. Did he did he ever join in training? Yeah, he did several times, and I have to say, he, he still he still got it. <laughs> I yeah, still got he, it. He was, <laughs> he was uh, he, every time he played with us, he was uh, he was really good. Yeah. Okay. Cool. But um, Christian, man, thank you very much for coming on. You're welcome. Thank um, you. We were obviously meant to do this before. I think okay. when we were meant to do this, that's when lockdown. That's when lockdown happened. Yeah, yeah just a few days before. Yeah. Yeah, just a few days. But um, thank you very much. Um, all the best with you moving forward. So you're back at training tomorrow, and um, yeah, I look forward to seeing you, and I'll, I'll be supporting you from here, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate, man. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wait there. Thank wait, you. Wait there. Let me just. Oh, oh yeah, guys. Keep remember to keep liking, subscribing, sharing. Get at us with your questions, get at us with your comments. We're here for that. Um, bye.